So welcome to this um, solstice reading. So this is the shortest day of the year in the Northern Hemisphere and uh, the longest night. And this dark, this, the length of darkness or this day represents something special for, for most people because it represents the day when the, the days start getting longer pretty much from here on in. It might actually take a few days before that actually is, happens. But this is the time when we start celebrating the return of the sun as it starts coming back in the northern hemisphere and this is a this is a big this is a big deal it's a big deal energetically it's a it's a big deal um on a spiritual level you will feel it you will you will experience there's a difference between the section of dates we we have this um whole christmas story um which is you know, married with this more more pagan old ritual around the solstice time. Uh, and, and this is why Christmas was um, kind of married with the birth of the light or the birth of the sun or the birth of Jesus in this case. And, uh, and so these, these uh, two ceremonial stories were, were married. And, um, and, and yet this has been a celebration that's taken place for for I don't know how long, and it's something. All the equinoxes and the, and the and the solstices create uh, this powerful shift of change, which we can all feel. And and so it's great to do readings. It's great to do. Uh, it's great to really center yourselves and, and connect and ask for guidance for this time. You can receive guidance at any time, but around this time, it's a little bit more powerful. Around this time, there's a lot more. There's a lot more energy connecting with the earth. It's, it's something, it, it's a shift. It's a powerful shift where there's a transition taking place. And in, in moments of transition, there is um, uh, a stronger communication between the physical planes and the non-physical planes, which you can either understand or believe in or not as the case may be. But that communication is a little bit more powerful, which means that messages and readings are um, things that are shared around these around these days become a little bit more intense and powerful. And that's why I, I'm picking this day to do this uh, to to do this little reading. And I'm going to show you this reading straight away. So three cards. Um, these cards don't have a position, and so don't think about them as having a position, but I, they do have an order that they came out in, and, and I'm going to read them in their order, but then relate them all together so that you can see. So these are the three cards. Let me pull them back. So the first one was actually this, the four uh, of, um, oh, this guy was actually upside down, excuse me. So the uh, the four of pentacles was the first the magician the second and and the and the the king of pentacles is the last one and he was reversed so let's talk about these three cards and let's i'm going to just take a few deep breaths and get into story mode and um and let's see what comes through So, so we're going to start with this four, the four of pentacles. And if you see in this reading, there are two kings already. There's one here and there's definitely one here. And these kings are both holding pentacles. One is holding four and one is surrounded by ten. So there's an energy of these kings and pentacles, which um, are the biggest theme that we need to look at maybe in this period and this upcoming time, whenever you see this video in this next three months, if you see it as a cycle, there's an energetic of this happening in the world today, maybe in this, um, in this, uh, in this upcoming um, weeks, we, we may, we might say is when we'll see this dynamic maybe being stronger. And so this card speaks about this, 
this attachment that we naturally have the four representing a very grounded energy inside of pentacles which is our relationship to the world to the physical world our relationship to our physical bodies is that relationship to money our relationship to our health and so this is a kingly relationship so it's a very abundant one it's a very powerful one and kings in the olden days they inherited their crown and so there's an inherited abundance there's an inherited relationship with the material world with our physical self with everything that that represents with our doing and there's an inherited pattern that this king feels like he's he has to hold on to and i'm going to jump a little bit just to this card as well which which comes along because these two cards have this very strong kingly nature to it. it's a very mature nature to it now i say king but this could easily be um you know it, it's probably designed to be a king but hey it can be a queen too and it doesn't really matter what there is is a certain regality there's a certain inherited nature of of us holding on to this material world which we all do we're taught to do it from day one the world teaches us to really hold on to the things that we have we're taught to treat the world treat our possessions treat things that we earn treat money treat health as something vitally important and it is all these things are important in a sense they are they are necessary so we have this very kind of clingy relationship to to the physical world we think our body is our only chance of life we think this vehicle that we're in this um, bag of bones and flesh and muscles and things is what dictates our life we don't see ourselves necessarily uh, on a, on a, in a deeper spiritual perspective. We're not taught this. We're taught that this is who we are. This body is who we are. And so it's very natural to feel incredibly attached to it. And that attachment um, can be very useful because we can accumulate abundance and we can hold on to the abundance that we might have and we can feel connected to the world and we can feel earthed and grounded and rooted and all of these things are wonderful all of these things feel great and this is also part of his message but there's a delicacy not delicacy there's a delicate nature to to this um to this attachment to this holding on to the pentacle because because we give so much importance to this material world and all things manifest and because we're just looking at, at the world through our five senses and thinking that's all there is this is life what we see is what is real is is the only reality that is worth it because we have this very fixed vision um it makes us a little bit codependent with this world and so we're codependent with our own bodies our soul our, our consciousness is having a codependent energetically holding on fearful relationship with this body and and this is where the this the duality of this card comes in and um, the duality of its message because we all we all are very attached to our physical bodies and we we might have had a couple of experiences down the line and we might have a thought or two that thinks yes i'm a spiritual person in a physical body but but we don't live that reality from day to day from moment to moment we don't that isn't the primary belief that we are holding that that creates and attracts all the things that we manifest in our lives the primary belief behind a lot of our existence as individual entities is that I am separate and that this separateness is most, most obviously me in this body. I might have a thought that I'm a spiritual, that I'm a soul inhabiting this body and just having a little visit and I might dance back out again and come back again into a different body somewhere down the line. We might have that idea, but that's not a valid experience for a lot of people. And it's not something that we're taught. It's not something that people talk about too much and it's even woo woo to religions and so 
these and yet and this is just my per um, perception and opinion this is our truth and so this attachment to this attachment to looking at life through our five senses while it can be rich and abundant and amazing and powerful and fantastic and we can collect all sorts of interesting things and do amazing wonderful um, experiences with our lives there is going to be a nature of feeling trapped feeling held back feeling a, a bit blocked this guy has, has got his heart blocked and he's not free to get up and walk away we're not free and we will never be free if we are trapped in the belief that this body is all there is and and yet on many fronts we look for freedom we look for love we look for we look for this expansive nature of who we are we look to 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 be able to grow beyond the limitations that we hold in our own lives and yet these limitations are very much connected to these primal beliefs these primal beliefs that are past that we inherited from our our past and they make us feel important yeah and they'll make us feel like a king but that importance is very short-lived because we're a king only of the physical world now let's just leave that card a moment but understand that <clears throat> And there's a general energetic of this and it's in this time of christmas and in this time of festivity where where people get together and people are sharing gifts and there's a lot of there's a lot of sharing there's a lot of love and there's a lot of um there's a there's a lot of feeding our senses as well you know we, we get a holiday and we we have a party and we'll go and do this we'll go and do that and we'll treat ourselves we'll excite our senses in more way and we'll give even more we'll have, find even more reasons to to express ourselves wonderfully in the physical dimension but it's a it's it the, one of the consequences is we end up losing our connection or losing that connection to the other belief that we are higher we are just branches of spirit we're twigs at the end of branches of spirit we are fingers in in the body of god we are just a, a reflection of the divine in this world and and yet we feel like when we're, we're, we're these individual beings and and that individual a, a attraction and codependent relationship with our individuality is not wrong or bad but it will always make us feel trapped and held and a little bit stuck sometimes and this king can feel overgrounded he can feel so rooted that he feels like a tree that you can't change his place and we want to change we want to grow we want to move we want to expand and then the magician comes in balancing this card and these two kind of can be read together and the magician comes in and 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 so he represents this is the major arcanus this is an important initiation in this card and while we can look at the magician in many ways, he, he is, he's the magician because he knows how to manifest things, we can say, which is very much akin to this king, very much akin to the king of pentacles as well. They can all manifest things wonderfully, one by holding on to and really grounding and rooting himself. But the magician knows how to manifest things through magic. He's not just got the one pentacle he's got all the elements on the table and he's surrounded by this abundance of roses and white and lilies which represent purity of thought and purity of desire and intention so and what that actually means is is represented by his stance where he's pointing one hand up to the heavens and say and one hand down to the earth and and he's saying i choose to be a channel for, for divine energy and bring it down into earth and bring down divine will and act and i choose and act according to what spirit chooses through me now this is sounds all haughty totty and we might not think that we are um, um able to do magic but this is this is in essence who we are and what we what we do in life we just call it something different a lot of the time. We don't um, 
if we might be religious we might you know pray to god and listen listen to god in in whatever name he may have and we'll say yeah i, I would like to you know be a better person do your bidding but we don't need to be religious and religions can can quite often d distract us from, from the truth this is our pure connection to the spirit inside of us our pure connection to source to this divine all that wants us to reflect the purity that spirit represents which is a connectedness a love uh, a divine oneness a unity not separation not division not hey this is me and that's you and we're not the same we're all different but hey we're all just different fingers or branches on the same tree we're different fingers of the same being we are we are here as reflections of the same light we might look different but we're not and this is the purity of thought the purity of, of intention and there's a desire in the magician he doesn't know how to use all of those um all of the four elements that are on the table in front of him he's he, he represents the beginning of our spiritual journey and the beginning of our spiritual journey becomes um is represented by the conscious choice that we're on it simple as that and so he comes into this reading or into this time in our life to say hey remember why we're here remember who we really are you know ask ourselves hey when we when we feel a bit stuck when we feel a bit like attached to this material world when we feel like it's a little bit heavy and holding us back ask ourselves hey what would spirit do in this situation how can i how can i be a mess how can i be a, a channel you know because this is all we are anyway we're all, we're not going to stop being reflections of spirit it's just that that reflection that reflection may get very tainted or very twisted with our with our ego to, it's like it's like grabbing this divine energy and then trying to house it and bottle it up and then twist it around a little bit refract it into all sorts of different colors and manifest shapes and forms by the time it comes out it doesn't look anything like what 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 is, what is the purity of its essence and so it's about opening our hearts maybe 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 letting go of that one that's over our hearts and say no 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 the best protection is actually being connected to my heart not covering my heart with things not uh, relating my heart to things to people and this is when we have these codependent relationships but instead just connecting to my heart and recognizing very simply that this is the key to me finding my personal way of being that divine connection to ching and it's a choice so it's a conscious thing it's a conscious choice so sometimes we make our choices on autopilot most of the time and occasionally we jump in and we switch off autopilot and we say yeah 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 but what do i what do i really want to choose in this situation in this dynamic and that's when answers might come different and we might even focus on our hearts and say hey guide me guide me to guide me towards something more true more sincere with greater integrity and that is is that choice that the magician represents because he's in that in that moment he's reminding us or we are reminding ourselves that that, that we are we are spirit and we're telling ourselves just by making that communication just by asking for the guidance just by saying hey i'm open show me yeah guide me i'm listening tell me um bring 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 it on i i i, I choose to be um a greater version of myself so that maybe i can manifest something that, that doesn't come from my little old school ego it doesn't come from the inherited patterns of my parents however great them that may have seemed at the time but comes from source and this is the choice this is the choice that the magician asks us to make and then we've got the king of pentacles which again it, I, I mentioned it before because the king is reversed so he speaks about this sort of negative the, the more sort of exaggerated sometimes 
connection we have with this world. So he is a doer and he's that part of us that just does a lot. And yeah, who, around these around these times of, of the year, everybody's running around trying to do as much as possible. You know, we, we've got so much to do. Why? We're, we might even have a few days holiday. Yeah, but then we've got a few days holiday. We're going to do this. We're going to go up and see that person. We're going to hang out with family. We're going to go and do this. We're going to do that. We're going to, we're going to make dinner. We've got to do this. We've got to get a presence. We've got to... And there's so much to do that we might overdo things. And this king is, a, is, is exactly that. And we have to... <sighs> this card is asking us to question hey is it all about just filling every gap every moment of our life is it all about and and the reason that we do things because is because we feel so responsible to the connection to the people that we have around us so this king is responsible for his kingdom and he's connected to everything around him and there's so much abundance there that he's like he he's got a strong sense of duty and we have a strong sense of duty to those people around us we have a strong sense of duty to to family and friends and and this and so and so we feel this obligation a lot of the time to hold space for everybody we feel this obligation a lot of the time to actually you know, be the best version that, that we think that the best version of ourselves again is to try and make things try and create a, an environment and hold that space in the environment that is the perfect space right we think that we need to do as much as we can for for as many people as we can and and the king loses himself sometimes. He loses himself in overdoing. And we lose ourselves in overdoing. We try to fill our lives with way too much. And it's because, again, it's because we, we are, we are putting, giving a greater importance to, to things, to doing things, to um, making the most of, to having the maximum experience, whatever we, th we are taught that, that is. And yet the maximum experience is sometimes the quieter version of this king. He has a lot of authority and he tries to, he has a genuinely good intention, but there is a discernment that's necessary that this whole reading speaks about. And it's like a discernment where we need to balance and we need to, to, to know exactly when to say yes and when to say no, 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 actually, actually, I don't need to do that. But then who's going to do it? It's not going to get done. And then and then and then and maybe that's OK. We need to redefine our duties so that we're not um, letting them all go. We're holding on to some of those obligations, but those obligations can drown us if we get if we over empower the material world and give it so much importance the issue with this king reversed is that he thinks his kingdom is the most important and this is just one of four elements and he's this is when we forget to feel we forget to rationalize the whole story. We forget to connect to our hearts and our creativity. And we'll just try and stimulate ourselves and our five senses and, and do everything in this world. And we'll forget the spiritual sense of who we are and what we're actually doing here. And we'll end up probably creating more division and more separation between ourselves and the world, even though our intentions might be good. And, and so we need to find a way hey how can i create more acceptance more love more and how can i discern when is the right time to act and when's the right time not to act and how can i feel responsible without this uh, guilt-filled and shame-filled obligations feeling that might come up sometimes yeah because when that comes up there's a story there that we need to uh, address how can i do my job do my work without over stressing about the what gets manifest through it and sometimes we have this idea oh let's do the perfect dinner let's do the perfect something or other and and it doesn't come out exactly the way we want it and that might be actually the perfect experience for us and so 
take away from our attachments to outcomes because this king is a little bit attached to outcomes and understand that the experiences that he's helping us choose to make are rich not just because of the things that might be created through them but because of the the sharing and the love and the connection and the communication and the and and the the heartfelt sense of coming together that maybe this this period of our lives and this this journey that we're all making is all about and i'll leave this reading here for now i hope you enjoyed it